What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to do a video on the application. I said when the application came out that I would do a video kind of going through the process of how you fill it out to apply. So here we go, it'll be a quick and dirty right through uh, all the boxes, but at least hopefully I point you in the right direction. So basically you wanna check whether you're a sole proprietor, an independent contractor, or self-employed individual. And the way that would uh, you would know is if you are a doing business as, uh, such as, you know, let's say John Smith, and you do business as JS Carpentry. So that would be your DBA, your train name. And then uh, your year establishment, they want to make sure that you were established prior to the pandemic. And that's where you're going to put there. Business legal name, if it's just John Smith, that's the legal name. Uh, your NIAS code is going to be found either on your tax return or it's what you operate under. So uh, you can search that on the internet to get an idea what the code is. But the most important part is if you if your business begins with the 72, then uh, you could potentially get a higher loan. Now, it doesn't look like on this application that they are doing the 3.5 times like they were on the previous application. So that's kind of weird, but that was the only reason why the NIAS code for 72, because you get three and a half instead of two and a half on the first application, but albeit it's not on here. So you want to uh, make sure you meet the size standards, that you're no more than 500 employees, or you say that you meet the size standards. Uh, street, city, and zip, they don't want PO boxes. In fact, most of the applications that I processed under the last two programs, if it had a PO box, we had to have the application changed and it needed a physical street address. I believe they're trying to cut down on the fraud due to people applying and putting a PO box and then not having an actual business. But anyway, I'm gonna put your EIN or your social security number, whichever one you operate under and make sure it's correct because this has to match up with your business checking account wherever you have it with the bank. They have to make sure they flow on the same thing. You can't have a personal checking account. So make sure that's correct. Uh, phone number, contact would be you, email address, uh, total amount of gross income. So this would be your 1040 schedule C line seven. I talk about that in this video here, a link. Uh, which year you used. If your 2020s are not done, you have to use your 2019s. If you're not 2019s are not done, you're going to have an issue. You have to have one of them done. And then you're going to put uh, how many employees you have, including you. So if it's just you, it's one. If you don't have employees, you'll fill out this next section, which is where you'll put the gross income. And that's going to be on that line seven. You're going to multiply it by 2.5 plus your EIDL. That's if you want to have that portion forgiven, not the advance, the actual loan you got from EIDL and you're gonna put that there. So if you have employees, then you need to skip to the next section and on your schedule C, line seven, you're gonna uh, subtract line 14, 19, and 26. So 14 is employee benefits, 19 is pension and profit sharing, 26 is wages less employment credits. So they wanna make sure you're taking out any, pay, any payroll that you've already Paid. So you'll put that in there and again, divide it by 12, multiply it. That's your average monthly payroll for employees. And you're going to add B and C together, multiply it by 2.5, and that's going to give you your loan amount, which you're going to go right here. And then you're going to check which purposes you're going to use the loan for. And this has to come with when the forgiveness portion. You want to make sure you use 60% of this loan for payroll in order to get it forgiven. And then you can cover things like rent, utilities, and things like that. Owner name, anyone more than 20%. And then you're gonna go down here. If you wanna self-identify by name this, you can. If not, you go ahead and answer the questions. Go on to page three, same thing. And then the one thing to look at is the current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary to support the ongoing operation of the applicant. You are attesting that you need this money in order for your business to keep going. Uh, how you're going to use the funds, uh, all those things, you're going to initial that to make sure you acknowledge exactly what you're borrowing the money for. Now, the one thing that this application doesn't say, which I haven't really looked down here. Okay, it does say over 100,000, that you need to decrease it by 100,000, but I also feel like it said the maximum loan amount is capped at right here is either cap table capped at $8,333. Um, that would be the 
box B. So so B cannot be larger than this. So that would give your maximum loan amount of the $8,333. Get my handy dandy calculator here. Would be that $20,833 that I put in the last video. So that's the max amount of money that you'll be able to get from this program using gross receipts. And that's it. That's uh, this first draw of the PPP program. And then the second draw is very similar. The only difference is if you look down here at the bottom, you have to put your gross receipts from 2020 versus 2019. And that's where you have to show at least 25% reduction. Now, if it's under $150,000, if it's under $150,000, you can leave this section blank. But in order to have this loan forgiven, you have to prove that 25% loss. That's all I've heard about from this application so far. I know the banks got the information very similar. They are working on a solution in order to receive these applications because this is new. Most banks that I've talked to or have heard of want to close their portal down by the 15th of March because this program expires on the 31st. Now, Congress may come back out and extend the program. If they do, then I would imagine the banks would have more time to process more loans, but if not, I would not wait. I would get this in, make sure you can get your money. Hope that was valuable. If you could do me a favor and hit that like button on your way out, I appreciate you watching this video. And until next time, have a great day.